Here's a fun fact. In 2020, more Brits bought cryptocurrencies than open stocks and shares ISAs. Now, I'm a big fan of cryptocurrencies, but this news is depressing even to me. Around 7% of adults in Britain have brought cryptocurrencies in the last year. That is more than the 5% of Brits who invested in stocks and shares ISAs. This information should ring massive alarm bells because it gives a great insight into the market psychology that we're feeling right now. Especially as 17% of those asked were unsure whether their cryptocurrencies were actually in black or red. A lot of these people don't even know if they've made any money. But this sort of mindset can't keep up in the markets. It never ends well. It's truly amazing that cryptocurrencies are finally being accepted. Some of us are even making some serious money off it. But the overwhelming majority of my investments are in a stocks and shares ISA, specifically this one in Trading212, where I can keep track of everything and I at least know how much money I'm up or down. But longer term, it's going to be very hard to pick your favorite cryptocurrency or pick your favorite hype stock. So to make sure that long term, I can keep my head through all of this craziness and still make a profit, I decided to take up dividend investing. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. Welcome back everyone, my name's Paul. Now, I'm new to investing. I've been investing about a year now and I decided to start a dividend reinvestment strategy, most specifically a dividend growth strategy. There are plenty of strategies out there that you can use to invest with that all make money. You can invest in innovative disruption, you can invest in growth, you can invest in index funds. I've discussed many times on this channel that the reason why most investors lose money is all psychological. They change their focus all the time. They're always buying and selling or they're always chasing what's hot at the moment. So more than anything, when getting into investing, you could do with a strategy. It doesn't really matter what strategy that is. And it can be any strategy, really, as long as it keeps you invested, as long as you're not going to sell out every single time Boris extends the lockdown. I chose to dividend growth invest. Now, there are a lot of arguments against dividend investing, plenty that I can debate very easily, but I'm not going to in this video. Today, I want to talk about why I got into dividend investing and why I think I'm so comfortable with investing so much money and why I hope it will keep me invested for a very long time. First, dividend investing beats the market. This might be surprising to some people because everyone thinks that dividends are irrelevant. But dividend stocks generally outperform and companies with a history of increasing dividends do even better. There are plenty of studies out there that show this, including the Hartford Fund study that shows from 1972 to 2017, dividend paying stocks return 9.25%. That's compared to the S&P 500 of 7.7% and also growth stocks, which was only 2.6%. And no, I'm not saying here right now that value beats growth. I don't think it does. But when you are looking at the growth sector in general, you have to consider just how many of these companies actually fail. Dividend growth companies rarely fail because they're profitable. That's the reason why they can keep growing their dividend. Yes, there are value traps. They should be very easy to spot. Don't get all commenty on me. And the study even showed that dividend growers returned 10.07% with a lower beta. Having a lower beta, a beta below one, means that it's less volatile. It means that the stock doesn't go down as much when everything else goes down. And it also doesn't have to be between 1971 and 2017. For the last 10 years, Broadcom has outperformed the market by 33%. And it's doing all this with a dividend yield of 3.72. This whole idea that dividends just simply eat into company cash flow just isn't true. If this is done right with relevant high cash flow businesses, you can outperform the market. I'm not saying you'll outperform high growth. I'm just saying you can beat the market with it. So dividend investing and more specifically dividend growth investing or what I like to call modern dividend investing does actually perform very well. Secondly, I like dividend investing because it produces income. You wouldn't believe how satisfying it is to see dividends come in every day. Every couple of days, these companies just pay me money and I get to do whatever I want with it. Some of them come in quite small and some of them are much bigger than others. But most importantly, all of these companies are actually capitally appreciating at the same time. And as I invest more, I expect my dividend payments to get bigger. 
And that's what's been happening over the past year. When I started, I was getting like three pound a month. And in the past three months, I've cleared 70 quid a month with one month almost reaching 100 quid. I almost got paid 100 quid in one month just for doing nothing. And there's something in my head that resonates with that, which makes me want to invest more. And it's the fact that one day, if I do grow this portfolio to a good amount, where maybe it might support me in my everyday living, maybe it'll pay loads of my bills. I don't have to start strategically selling off these stocks to try and gain some money. I can just decide on that day that I don't want to reinvest my 90 quid back into my stocks and shares ISA. I can just take it out and start spending it on Lambos and whatever. And that's my next reason for dividend investing. I'm thinking very far ahead here. There's no ticking clock. Now in traditional index investors, you know, when you follow the FIRE movement, you follow FI, you have to follow a rule called the 4% rule. The FIRE movement is a truly amazing movement where if you are disciplined, you can save up all of your money in index funds. It'll get you 10% average return over the next 30 years. And you'll be able to retire early by simply selling off little bits of that index fund. And all you've got to do is hope you don't run out of money before you die. The 4% rule is apparently a safe withdrawal rate. And it probably is. But with dividend investing, I can just smash all my money into Avalon Bay communities and it will pay me a 4.01% dividend yield. I don't have to sell any shares. I maintain my entire stake in the business. And all I have to do is accept all of that cash that Avalon Bay are going to give me and I'll be able to live just fine. So by dividend investing, I avoid that ticking clock. I avoid that fear of running out of money one day. There are arguments against this and I'll go through them in a different video. But today's video is all about why you might just prefer dividend investing. And finally, I like dividend growth investing because it's a strategy where you don't really need to do that much research. Obviously, with all investing, you do need to research companies. You need to know what you're investing in, especially if you're in ETFs. Broad-based index funds are largely less risky, but there are a lot of small index funds, which are basically managed funds with high fees that you should probably try to avoid as well. With dividend growth investing, I'm looking for companies that are consistently growing their dividends and hopefully not using debt to pay for those dividends. And what's great about the average dividend growth company is that they're companies that you probably have heard of. Most of these companies are generally going to be well-known, very strong brands, very strong moats, and shouldn't be that disruptible. That's not to say that I just ram my money into Microsoft whenever I want. I personally do take things to the next level because I kind of find it fun. But dividend reinvestment and dividend growth does narrow my search and I don't have to go diving into Reddit to go and find the next hot stock. And I've listed all these reasons why I've specifically chosen this strategy. But these reasons all account towards my personal motivation. I need these reasons to stay invested in the bad times, not just the good times. When things are going well, it's easy to stay invested in a strategy. And I'm hoping when more bad times come or when I start to underperform the market or something like that, the reasons that I've listed should keep me motivated to continue popping in 1,000, 1,600 pound a month and keep filling my ISA. And eventually I might be able to end up at a certain amount of money where I can just start taking that income and having it pay for my life and I won't have to lift that finger to generate that income. If you're following hype and making money, more power to you. Go watch those other idiots on YouTube. Most of those are losing money and hiding it. My portfolio currently sits at 29,047 and Trading212 says that I'm 11.78 up. It says I'm 11.92% up in my own portfolio and I'm beating the S&P 500 by about two or 3%. But this green number doesn't show my dividends reinvested. That's a bit of a downfall from Trading212. I'm hoping that one day they do consider money way to return and I can show my real return on investment. So things are looking very good for me right now. I don't consider myself doing particularly well, especially as we've been in this bull market. I also had to sell off one of my most profitable companies to get a different type of share class and things like that might lower my return as well. But people that don't like dividends generally say that dividend companies don't generally appreciate in capital value. And my portfolio must be proof that that isn't true. Some of these dividend stocks are over 20 or 30% up, which is apparently a very good return for the stock market. And every week I'm happy to show you my portfolio as it is, as I'm reinvesting in it, and I try to show as many of the changes that I make every week. And I just want you to know that this is all of my money. 29,000 pound is all of the money that I have in the world and I haven't seen a number this high. And every month, even every week, it keeps growing. Most of that, of course, is my own reinvestment. I'm trying to save as much as I can to increase that compounding as quickly as I can. 
but I'm starting to see that a lot of it now could start to come from dividends. As this money grows, the compounding effect is really starting to take place. I cannot believe that after only a year, I could soon be saving a hundred pound a month just in dividends. That's money that companies just pay me to have my money involved in them. And that's it. And that's what seems to be most important about investing. Your ability to keep on going, to stick with the times for the long term, to buy the dips and whatever you want to call it, no matter what strategy you're involved in. Motivation and discipline seem to be the keys to generating long-term wealth. Staying invested, staying involved, staying with the strategy always seems to work. Thank you very much for watching everyone. The investment app that I use is called Trading212. If you wanted to get into investing, you can sign up through a link in the description below. There is also a link in the description below where you can have a look at my entire portfolio. You can see all of the holdings that I have and how I weight them in my portfolio. And if you sign up through that link, you can go onto a waiting list and you can get a free share that's worth up to 100 pounds. And get looking at me on Instagram. Sometimes I show you little sneaky peeks of what the next video is gonna be, but I also share little bits of information about my research every now and then. Like recently, I've been looking at BAE Systems and to be honest with you, the Glassdoor review of BAE Systems was very surprising. A 93% approval of CEO. That's an extremely high CEO approval rating. Thank you very much for watching everyone. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like, subscribe and invest. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. The sucker's going up.